Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up your cool shop on your mountain bike. I'm also going to be teaching you all the different terms on your cool shop mean, for example, your preload, spring rate, and all that stuff. By the end of the video, you'll be able to know how to set up your cool shock and make you feel good on the trails, but you also know what all the different terms mean for a cool shock. Okay, so how does a cool shock work and how is it different to an air shock? Well, instead of putting more air into your shock to make it harder, you use a spring to resist against the forces that are put through your bike. So for example, if your shock was too soft, you'd have to buy a higher spring rate coil for your shock and then your shock would feel stiffer. And if your shock felt too soft, you have to buy a softer spring rate so that your cool shock can use more of its travel. Cool shocks are harder to set up and harder to get right, but once they are set up nicely, they work really, really well and they have a few advantages over air shocks. For example, they're more sensitive to small bumps because there's less seals you have to keep all the air in and also they're less maintenance. Okay, so what do the different terms on a cool shock mean? Well, compared to air shocks, you have some new terms you need to learn. For example, spring rate. So spring rate is the amount of force that is needed to compress the shock by one inch. The higher the spring rate is, the harder it's going to be to compress your coil shock. And you can buy a different spring rate for your coil shock that usually come in 50 pound increments. By 50 pounds, I don't mean the price, I mean that's the amount of force that is needed to compress the shock. You also have preload, which is a different term for the coil shock compared to the air shocks. And preload is how much the coil is compressed without any weight on it. You can change the amount of preload on your coil shock by winding the coil up so that the binder underneath the coil is pushing it up more. So you have to think of it like this, if you put more preload on the shock, you're compressing the spring more, so therefore there's going to be more force of the spring pushing outwards before you even get on the bike. The more preload there is, the higher the shock will sit on its travel, the less preload there is, the softer the shock's going to feel. And also, if there's less preload, the shock is going to sink lower into its travel on a trail. Preload can also be used to make micro adjustments to your sag, so instead of having to buy a new spring rate, you can usually just change the preload, but obviously if there's too much preload differences, you have to buy a new spring. Right, now on to the terms that are also on air shocks, but I'm just going to tell you them anyway. So you have a lockout, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just locks out your shock, and this is used for climbing or just on flat trails. Then you have rebound. This is on all types of suspension, usually on forks and shocks, and it basically changes how fast it takes for the suspension to return to its full travel. Lastly, you have low speed compression and high speed compression. These two settings only usually come on higher end shocks like the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate or the Fox shocks or the higher end ones. So low speed compression changes the support of the suspension in the first 50% of the travel. It usually changes the feel of the suspension when you're pumping over rollers or when you're going up a takeoff of a jump. The high speed compression usually only comes on really high end shocks so it's quite rare and it basically changes the feel of the suspension in the last 50% of the travel. So it affects the suspension on routes and harsh chains and jumps basically. Right, so now that you know what all the different terms on a shock mean, I'm now gonna teach you how to set the sag on your cool shock. Okay, so sag is basically the amount of travel that is used when you're just sitting on your bike with just your body weight. You usually wanna aim for between 20 and 30% sag depending on what sort of riding you do. 20% is obviously stiffer than 30% sag and 20% is usually used if you're doing mainly jumps. 30% is usually used if you're riding mainly tech. Or you can go 25%, which is in between, obviously 20% and 30% sag, and that's used if you're riding a bit of tech one day and a bit of jumps, so you can get a mix of both. Okay, so to set the sag, you want to get your usual riding kit on, knee pads, helmet, stuff like that, and if you take a bag with you, you also want to put your bag on with all the tools you put in it. And you just want to sit on your bike leaning against a wall or a tree or something to help you balance, and you want to lift your legs off the floor so that the shock is completely compressed by your weight. You can either use a friend to help you with this, or on some shops you have a foam ring, and you want to slide the foam ring down onto the bottom of the seal. And when you can press your shock with just your body weight and all your riding gear, the foam ring will show you how far the travel moved. If you don't have a foam ring on your bike and you don't have a friend with you either, you can just put a cable tie loosely around the stanchion of your shock. Just make sure you don't do it too tight so you can cut it off at the end. With rock shocks, coil shocks, you usually get sag increments written on the stanchion of the shock and it goes from 20%, 30% and 40%. On other shocks though, like the Fox Coil shocks, they don't have the sag increments written on the stanchion, so you have to use a ruler and do some maths to work out your sag. Okay, so to measure your sag on shocks that don't have the sag increments written on the stanchions, you're gonna wanna use a cable tie or your foam ring to see where the shock extended to. You also wanna find out what stroke your shock has. This will usually be written on your bike manufacturer's website. So for example, if you have a 50 millimeter stroke on your shock, and the shock is compressed 12 and a half millimeters just by your body weight. You want to do 12 and a half millimeters divided by 50 millimeters, and that'll give you 
0.25 relates to 25% sag. If your shock is too stiff, so for example, it's lower than 20% sag, like 10% sag for example, you wanna firstly take some preload off by winding the coil. If this still doesn't work and you can't get your preferred sag, you'll have to buy a lighter spring rate coil. If your shock is too soft, you might wanna add some preload to see if that works. Obviously, if it doesn't work, you're gonna have to buy a high spring rate coil. Your sag will determine what spring rate and preload you need on your coil shock. Okay, now we've got the hard bit out of the way, which is setting the sag. We're now gonna move on to the other modes on your shock, such as the rebound. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna set your rebound halfway. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna set your rebound halfway just as a base setting. So for example, if your shock has 10 clicks of rebound, you wanna set it to five clicks of rebound from the slowest setting. Then once you're out on the trail, you wanna test it and just ride it on all types of different terrain, just to get a feel for it. If the shock feels like it's too fast and bounces around on routes, or if it feels like it's bucking you on jumps, you want to slow it down a little bit by two or three clicks. If the shock feels like it's too slow and it feels a bit harsh over roots or if it just feels like it's not got enough support on jumps, you want to speed it up by two or three clicks and just keep repeating this process until it feels nicely. The amount of rebound you have will depend on your riding style. So for example, if you ride more tech than jumps, you're going to want a higher rebound so that the shock can return to its full travel for the next hit over roots and stuff. And also a really fast rebound might box some people on jumps, which is obviously going to cause a crash. Okay, so if you're riding just mainly jumps, you're obviously not going to need too fast of a rebound because your shot won't be taking repetitive hits like roots and rocks. And a slow rebound is going to give you more support on lips. Alright, to set your lowest peak compression settings, you want to firstly start with the lowest amount of lowest peak compression that's on your coil shock. We're going to use this just as a base setting at first so we can go test it out in the trails and see how it feels. If it feels like there's no support when you're pumping rollers or pushing through lips or a takeoff, you just want to add a little bit of low speed compression and keep doing this until it feels good. If your shock feels perfectly fine without any low speed compression, then just leave it like that. But I would recommend that you test a little bit of low speed compression just to see if you like it or not or if you prefer it. You won't be able to feel extremely noticeable differences when you do change your low speed compression setting, but just play around with it and see if you like it or not. We're going to do the same process for the high speed compression settings if you do have this on your coil shock. So obviously you just want to start it at the lowest amount of high speed compression you can get and slowly move it up until it feels perfect and obviously if it feels perfect without any high speed compression just leave it like that. And lastly your lockout doesn't need setting up, you only use it if you're riding on roads, climbing or just on really flat trails. You don't want to use a lockout on jumps and stuff because it could blow it out and end up damaging your bike. Okay everyone, that is the end of this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you out. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. Also follow my Instagram which is in the description. Anyway, I'll see you next week.